and I are back here on the Yellowstone River in Montana's Paradise Valley, uh, where we've really been tearing it up uh, with uh, fishing streamers and catching some really nice uh, big brown trout just right in this area the last uh, last week or so. And I'm not want to uh, claim to be any kind of uh, streamer fishing guru, but I got a few tricks up my sleeves and and uh, might just. Uh, Give a little advice here, if I talk along as, as I fish a little bit, and, and uh, maybe there'll be something useful in it for you if you if you haven't fished streamers a lot, or even if you have. Um, first, let's talk a little bit about about equipment and gear. And you know, I think uh, lately a lot of folks that that uh, younger folks, especially that are really trophy hunters, have have been using seven weight, even eight weight, stiff rods and casting heavy. Maybe sink tips and, and huge streamers with that, but but really, unless you're only after huge, huge trout, that's just not necessary. And likewise with a boat, a, a, you really don't need a boat to fish streamers. And in fact, I think you can fish a lot of times more effectively uh, on foot with with wading, wading and, and swinging streamers because you can really uh, you know, systematically cover the best water. Uh, whereas if you're floating by in a boat here, you're going to get maybe one, two casts in this nice water. Uh, weight fishing, we can get a hundred casts, we can get a thousand casts if we want to, and, uh, and it can be very effective. I mean, one thing, kind of a starting point, is to find good, good streamer fishing water, and, and for, for the most part, it, the, the best streamer fishing water to me it, it tends to be uh, areas like this, where there's a, a faster current that's kind of sweeping out and around, but then on, on our side of that current, there's some nice, deep, slower water where those big, big trout like to hang out and, and look for something floating by in that faster current. So generally, when you're fishing streamers on foot, at least, you're going to find something like this or a riffle corner where there's deeper, slower water uh, on, on the, our side of a, of a fast current. And that's going to be a great place to, to look for some really nice fish. Um, something like this, riffle corners, like I said. Um, and, uh, and you know, you're really just going to systematically cover the water uh, with this this streamer. Um, so we're going back to, to equipment. Uh, you, you probably don't want to follow my example and, and fish uh, fish big streamers with a, a four weight little spindly little noodly rod like this Sage Circa. But if you've got a five weight or six weight that's relatively fast action. Um, you can cast pretty much any streamer except for the perhaps the biggest and bulkiest and you probably don't want to be fishing those anyway because well you can hurt yourself when they hit you. Um, for, for weight fishing I almost always just use a, a floating line and then a, a regular nine foot leader. You can go pretty heavy on the tippet uh, for streamer fishing when like say fishing small dries. I, I try to kind of compromise it. This is a nine foot zero X leader. Um, you certainly can go heavier than that, stronger than that, but I, I think uh, you're kind of balancing the sink rate, and the, the thicker and stiffer your leader, the, the slower your, your, your streamer is going to sink. So something like 0x, even 1x, 2x, uh, but you certainly don't need to go any, any lighter than 2x to, to fish bigger streamers, and that, that's a, a good thing, because when you do get a big fish, you don't have to worry too much about it breaking off. Um, in general, for, for wade fishing streamers, I'm looking for a, for a streamer that has a a, a relatively heavy head, whether it be uh, lead dumbbell eyes like this guy, which is, um, or uh, a big heavy cone, maybe even a tungsten tungsten cone. What you're looking for is a fly that's going to get down fast, and that's going to kind of give a real jiggy action. So if it's heavy in the head, um, with the floating line, as it drops, that it's going to drop head first. Um, but then when you strip, it's going to jig up and down. And so that's something that I look for in a, particularly when I'm. Uh, fishing a streamer on a floating line. With a sink, sink tip, it's a different story. Sometimes it can be even better to, to, uh, to, to fish a, a light, uh, light buoyant fly with a sink tip. But with the floating line, heavy head, you can even pinch on a split shot or two right in front of the head. It's not like the fish are going to be leader shy or, or split shot shy. They're just going to see this coming by and, and either they're going to grab it or not. So let's actually do some fishing. And so like I said, we're going to start I usually fish downstream uh, when I'm when I fish swinging streamers, and and so I'm going to usually start at kind of the head of the of the pool or run that I'm going to be fishing, and sometimes you will find fish just right uh, right where the water comes in here. So it's a good idea to swing a couple right through there uh, because sometimes they will sit right in underneath that uh, that fast current. So I'm going to start short and just kind of cast it out there and and 
strip it back through that uh, that water. Um, and so again, you're generally going to cast either kind of straight across the current or, or a little downstream. You want to give it a little time to sink so you can throw some mins in there and then just kind of swing it uh, right out of the current here. And we'll see that a uh, little better down, down lower. Um, and I'm just going to work my way downstream, okay? No, nothing hit it there. Um, usually, if, if, they're gonna, if a fish is going to hit the streamer, it's going to do so on the first pass. So I don't really go back through water. I just kind of work my way downstream, take a couple steps, let that, uh, let that streamer uh, sink, 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 and then just kind of strip it and swing it back out of that current into the slower water. But you'll see I do a few things that to kind of en enhance the action of, of this streamer. Um, one thing I do, and I don't know if it really matters, but it's, uh, it's not that hard to do, so I do it anyway. And that is just to kind of keep that, uh, as I strip, to, to just wobble that rod tip back and forth. You're really trying to, to make that streamer look like a, an easy meal for a big trout. And uh, so you kind of want it to be as jerky, herky-jerky as you can, make it look like a wounded minnow that, uh, that a big trout's not going to have to expend a lot of energy to chase down. So we're just going to kind of let it swing out of there, and, and as I do so, I'm wiggling that rod tip, just trying to make it give it a little more of a herky-jerky action. One thing to know about uh, about streamer fishing for trout, especially in the West, that one of their uh, favorite big meals is, is the sculpin, or, or sculpin bait fish. Um, tons of them are in the Yellowstone River and other Western rivers. Um, big, meaty meal for, for a big trout. Uh, what's what's Im important to know about this sculpin is they're not particularly good swimmers. They don't kind of hang out in the current. They are they are bottom uh, dwellers, so they'll try to kind of hang out and hide underneath rocks um, on the bottom rather than than uh, swimming rapidly away from predators. Or you know, so when when they are disturbed by a predator, what they're generally going to do is is make just a couple of herky-jerky swimming motions and then try to drop back down and, and hide in the rocks. So you you want to kind of try to imitate that, uh, that kind of swim, swim, drop action, especially when, when you're uh, stripping your, your streamer back through slower water where you can really work it. Um, and, and not, uh, and you can really give it, uh, give it that herky-jerky action. You can do a couple of strips and a pause, a couple of strips and a pause. You also just want to kind of vary your retrieves. Sometimes they're going to want it moving faster. Sometimes they're going to want it moving very slowly. So just, uh, just try shorter strips, longer strips, faster, slower. Um, just, you're, you're just hoping to get one nice fish interested in that, uh, in that easy meal. Another thing about that, these large trout that I've, I've been catching here lately, you'd think a big fish, big meal, big streamer, that, that, uh, that big predator of a brown trout is going to smash that streamer uh, with no uncertainty, um, but you'd be wrong. The, the fish I've been catching lately, the takes have actually been pretty subtle and have generally taken place uh, in the pause between strips when that, uh, when that streamer is dropping back down. And they haven't, they haven't been smashes. They've been more kind of a uh, tap, tap almost. So really pretty subtle. So really, if you feel anything out of the ordinary, uh, a tug, a tap, you know, just give it a, a quick, uh, quick, uh, strong uh, strip there. And, and hopefully if it was a fish, it'll embed that, that hook and you'll be on your way. But if it, there's nothing to lose by doing that uh, strip strike and anything you feel that's a little out of the ordinary, but don't expect all the uh, the the takes on streamers to be vicious in, in any uh, they just uh, they often are pretty subtle especially in this slower deeper waters that swings through that if you feel any kind of tug just uh, give it a strip and and uh, if it is a fish well hopefully you've, you've uh, hooked it up and, and you'll have some fun but so just kind of swinging it out of that uh, that current into the sl somewhat slower, deeper water here. Um, as I swing into the slower water, I'm not gonna strip as fast. Like I said, I'm gonna try to imitate that sculpt and just give it a couple of jerky, jerky swims and strips and then kind of let it uh, drop back down to the bottom, a couple more and then just uh, 
just feel for any kind of, of tap or tug as, as that, particularly as that fly is dropping between, uh, between strips. So I'm just, again, the, just kind of the basic, just casting across into that stronger current, putting a couple of men's in to give it time to, to sink without the line being tight, and then just tightening the line up, letting it swing out into that, uh, into that deeper, slower water, and then stripping it back towards me in kind of herky-jerky, sculpin-like fashion. Um, If you are fishing big streamers, big heavy streamers, especially if you don't have a lot of experience with that, I do recommend that you pinch all your barbs. Um, you can pretty easily uh, smack yourself in the back of the head or on the shoulder or something and on an errant cast, and uh, a lot more pleasant getting those hooks out of you if, you, if you've uh, done away with the barbs first. And yes, there's a chance you'll you'd lose a big fish, uh, but I think there's even a much better chance you're gonna plant those both two hook, uh, two big hooks in your in the back of your skull, and uh, want to be <laughs> want it to be a reasonably easy process getting those out of there. So I'm just a couple steps in between each cast, casting out, mending, letting it uh, sink down there, and then uh, kind of just tighten up the line, letting it swing out of that uh, faster current. And then uh, stripping it back towards me. And one thing that you, you can do a lot with while you're uh, streamer fishing on foot, at least, is using mins to to uh, adjust your your swing. Um, so first of all, you're, you're going to put a couple mins in just to let it sink. But if you're if there's a particularly juicy piece of water right out there, you want the the streamer to kind of just hang in there for a bit. You can just kind of strip it towards where you want it and then just put an up mend directly upstream of that fly. You can do it again, and that's gonna kind of hold it right in that current. Just let it kind of swim back and, back and forth in that current. On the other hand, if you want it to swim quickly out of the current and through that slower water, and have more of a, a, a profile that's perpendicular to the water, you can throw in a big downstream mend before you start stripping, and we'll get that going here. The wind's picking up, which is always fun when you big guy. Uh, heavy stream run a four weight um, but you may not be able to see this but I'm, I'm letting it drift and now I want it to come souping through that uh, slow water I'm gonna put a big downstream mend in and then start stripping and instead of coming uh, towards me it's gonna kind of swing around that uh, that mend and, and came in much more quickly into this the uh, into that slower water and sometimes that can do the trick so just again just try a bunch of different stuff upstream mends downstream mends fast strip fast short strips, slow long strips. Um, it's really a matter, you're just trying to piss off or, uh, or interest a, a one nice fish here. So you just anything that, that might make it look like an easier meal or might uh, change things up a little bit, that's, uh, it's worth trying. Uh, there's nothing, no hard and fast rules about, uh, about fishing those streamers. Over the years, my motto for fly fishing has become a pretty simple one, and that is, uh, if you're going fly fishing, have fun. Uh, and the corollary to that uh, it would be that when you stop having fun, uh, go home and go have a cold beer or a hot chocolate. And uh, It's not supposed to be hard work. Uh, it's supposed to be a fun activity, so especially on uh, days like today where that headwind, cold headwinds picking up and making casting difficult and it's cold like I said. Uh, we're just gonna go into a nice warm house and, and have a beer. Well I hope uh, something I've I've said today is, it, is something that is of help to you and, and if not uh, uh, well uh, you can post your own streamer fishing uh, tips uh, and uh, help everybody out with that. So, uh, see you soon.